And good morning. Good to have you here, and it's so nice to have Kent uh, live uh, and in person, as opposed to listening to it pre-recorded. Uh, this is, it's been a long, long journey, I'm, I know, for many of you, but also uh, for uh, the three of us and, and uh, Evelyn in the back as she's been working with us. Uh, we're also reminded each and every week we can't stop the tape and start over. So uh, with the mistakes, we'll just pretend like they didn't happen. So good to have you all with us as we continue to gather indoors as well as outdoors. Wanted to let you know if you uh, watch the announcements that are on the uh, take-home sheets uh, that uh, we have a, uh, what is it called, a polka, polka party? Okay, a polka party coming up in June, and so uh, watch for those details. It'll be in the parking lot. We'll be inviting the neighborhood, uh, a chance to uh, gather back uh, in person as uh, the uh, restrictions are opening up where uh, it's okay to be outdoors uh, in, in uh, large gatherings when you're just uh, kind of milling around. So uh, there'll be uh, all sorts of snacks and, and um, uh, music and a chance to uh, reconnect with folks. So that's coming up, and then there's all sorts of other things happening, but uh, just wanted to lift that up now. Uh, so let us practice our uh, refrain. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so we'll use that a couple of times throughout our worship service this morning, but let us begin with our thanksgiving for baptism. As you're able, let us stand. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so as we are refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, now let us give thanks for the gift of holy baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness and send us as companions on our journey as we share your life. Together, make us one risen Christ, cleanse our hearts, Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is We Know That Christ Is Raised. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Thank you. 
And so we give thanks for those uh, folks from the choir who uh, worked their way in at a special time to do that recording. It's a lot easier, or it looks a lot easier than it is to pull that off. So our first reading for this day is from 1 John chapter 4. It is written, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that he might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God has loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever has fear has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who don't, do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love a God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must also love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 15. Glory to you. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine girl. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he plants to make it bear more fruit. You have already been clean by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is strewn away like a branch and word us. Such branches gather, throw into the fire, and burn it. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This morning, I want to talk to us on a topic 
abiding in Christ. Abiding in Christ. Jesus decided to remain with his disciples. First, let me ask, are you a gardener or a farmer? Or have you had a garden before? And what kind of garden you have? Jesus decided to remain with his disciples a little longer in order to help the disciples to understand more by giving them revision, reimagination, what the future would be like for them. So he decided to use some illustration, things that were really familiar to them. So Jesus had gathered his disciples around him and seek to prepare them. He foresee the future regarding possibly what could happen. And now he decided to demonstrate to them some of the reason. So he's going to use one of the I am here. We know last week, Pastor Jeff spoke about the good shepherd. So in John chapter 15, there are a lot of series of I am. For example, in John 6, 35, say, I am the bread of life. In John 8, 12, he said, I am the light of the world. In John 10, 7, he said, I am the gate of, for the sheep. Then John 10, 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. In John 11, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then in John 15, he said, I am the true vine. In the days of old in Palestine and Middle East, every year, the gardener or the farmer will spend time to plant their garden or their crops or things they had to plant. So every year they did that. That was in Palestine. But also notice that even in the United States, every year people also do that. So for the fact that Jesus is saying, I am the true vine, Israel in the Old Testament was referred to as a vine. But then what happened in the vineship is that it did not do what was right, that was satisfactory to God. So even though it was in the Old Testament as the vine, but they were not the vine. So in the New Testament, Jesus is the true vine. So now he demonstrated that to give them assurance that even I'm leaving, but know this. I am, I am the true vine. You need to depend and rely on me. So to bring that and to illustrate that, this is a gift from Pastor Jeff and his family last year. And I kept it in the house. I didn't take good care of it. We had a good care of it. I don't know whether it's going to bear fruit or not, but just allow me to demonstrate to you a little bit. In this text, Jesus is saying the Father is a vine Girl. It's a father that take care. It's a father that own the vine. Own the farm. He is responsible to cultivate, to make it grow. He is the vine. And he referred to the disciples as branches. So he telling them, if you are to bear fruit, you need to depend on the vine. If you don't depend on the vine, what happened? You are not going to bear fruit. So he demonstrated to them that they need to know their identity. They need to identify with him. The word abide could represent stay in. Stay in the house. Remain. Be focused. Reassure. Realign. So for the survival of this plan, it depends on the soil, which is God. It also depends on the vine and also the branches. So God will have the option to take care of that crop. If they see that something is not okay, they cut it off. 
for you to bear much fruit. Let's bring that point to ourselves. It also means that God do take care of us. If something about us that is not okay, he guides us, he protects us, he nourishes us to make sure that we will bear much, much fruit because that's part of his work. So Jesus was telling them, decided disciple, if you go out there, don't just go alone. Because if you go alone, what's going to happen, it's possible as a branch, you're not going to make it alone. You might fall off. You may not survive alone. So you need to remain in me so that you, so that I can give you my identity to be called Christian out there. Now you will go for assurance of the Holy Spirit, the Father, and all of the courage, and now you know that I am you, and you are in me, and because I love you. So that's a teaching that he was also demonstrating to them. He also gave them that they needed to bear much, much, and bigger fruit. Now, why he said all of this thing? Jesus knew that one have already left. The eleven was there. There was temptation already on the spot. So he needed to know that. In the venture into the world, they are there as disciples, but also God is with them. And God the Father, God in us, is also with them. What is that teaching us, people of God? That we live in a world in a society that speaks a lot about individualism. But as Christian, Christ is also telling us that you are with me. Even though it's an individualized society, but you are also part of the vine. You are to stay in the vine. Courage comes. From the vine, growth comes from the vine. Sustainability comes from the vine. The resources that we need to survive Christians comes from the vine. The nourishment that we need also comes through the vine. So what is this telling us? That our identity is in Christ. He is the true vine. He is the bread of life. He is the resurrection of life. He's not telling us that we don't have the opportunity to do other things. Yes, we have the opportunity to do other things, but he's saying for you to be able to do much more better with me in the vine. Live in there. Because there were your life comes from. There where your resources come from. There where your power comes from. So those are all points that he will demonstrate to them. It serves as a courage for all of us. Or to be a gardener is not an easy task. Sometimes it's hard work. To be a farmer sometimes it's not an easy task. It's hard work. Farmers, we appreciate them. God, we appreciate them, but it's also hard work. They understand the season. They understand the time. They understand what it takes for the crops to grow. And God understands what it takes for all of us to be in him and be to love by God because God is love and we are to remain in love. So part of body in Christ is to persevere, to move on, to obey, to observe, to do things that he wants us to do. So he knew that. And last words are really, really important. For him to be living and to tell his disciples, just listen to me, that was special for them. So in short, just to illustrate the three points, or bring out the three points, 
to remain in Christ gave us the reassurance. It also gave them an identity and totally to be able to bear much food. Apart from that, it becomes difficult. And Jesus is the true vine. May God reach them, bless all of us. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. Together, let us confess our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we have gathered together in God's house, as God's people, we abide in the vine, for we are the branches. And so we pray for those who are in need, for those that we bring before God, and for life and creation and the gift of God's grace. As we are alive in Christ, now we bring our prayers before God. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Now we ask that you would cleanse us by your word so that we may bear fruit and witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depend on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you rule the nations with justice and love. Give to the leaders of the earth courage, honesty, and compassion, that they may lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy. And you have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, the outcast, the weak, those who are fearful. We pray for our first responders, and for those who were killed last night here in Green Bay at the casino, as their families grieve, as co-workers wonder, hold them close in your arms and lead us to provide for the needs of all, the hungry, the homeless, and especially those that we name before you in our hearts or out loud. Lord, in your mercy. 
And so, Lord God, you gather us with all the saints by the power of your Spirit. We raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And so may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. I invite you now to greet those around you, spin, wave, whatever, however it works for you. And so let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the offering that we have gathered. Lord God, we give you thanks for these signs of your gracious love. For they are signs of our work, our joy, our opportunity to witness and to proclaim. Let these gifts be brought before you for the work of proclaiming, of reaching out, and of teaching the grace that is given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now may the Lord be with you. And, also with you. and may you lift up your hearts as we lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. And so we have gathered this day with the whole church on earth and of hosts of heaven to praise your name and join in all their glorifying of you. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, now, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you, it's shed for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now take and eat the bread that you received. Receive the body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, receive the blood of Christ that is shed for you. <clears throat> and so let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. May it strengthen us in faith toward you and in service towards one another through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sending hymn is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go now in that risen peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.